All right, so in the previous part I was talking about the uh, representation I'm showing here, and I uh, apologize for the poor quality of me trying to plot these things uh, on the fly. Um, so before that, we're talking about coordinates x and y. Uh, of course, when we're talking about GMDX, we're not so interested in just the uh, computer vision approach to doing the problems and actually looking at things from a, a purely, uh, uh, how should I say, raster-based or aperture-based uh, approach or whatever. So uh, we're looking at shapes uh, from a 3D perspective, so we could get different pictures from different angles and we, we, we can actually reconstruct and actually show it from different angles if we wish to. Uh, what we want to have is some sort of an innate and some sort of a uh, intrinsic uh, measure. So usually distances will be a reasonable thing to measure uh, correspondence by or to assess the distances between uh, uh, corresponding, not corresponding objects, but adjacent parts of an image and actually be robust to the changes in, uh, uh, in, in changes due to rotation or translation or whatever, so things moving around. Uh, if you're a, uh, a rigid object, it doesn't matter if you move about a lot, as long as you don't change in terms of an actual innate shape. If you're uh, an elastic or a uh, glued up type of thing, you'd expect things to be a bit more cohesive. So, what we want to do though, uh, is to represent a shape as a set of distances or a set of measurements, essentially, uh, in an image. So we no longer deal with just X and Y. And, uh, we don't deal with texture because we're not so interested in the texture of the image. Uh, we could be, but in this case it's efficient as opposed to uh, basically just get the, uh, uh, the information out. Uh, in a very invariant way, so even if we bend it a little bit, it's just going to stay uh, consistent uh, compared to the previous states it was in. Okay, so let me just, well, let's say we have this measure D1, D2, and so on to Dn. Okay, so we could actually put them here and treat them as a high-dimensional problem to be reduced and then find the principal, the, the principal distance or the principal component of distances which isn't exactly going to yield what we hope for but I'll explain in the next video what, what we might be interested in doing with that.